Greetings sailors, welcome to World of Warships. This is a replay of mine and it's a rather older one. This is actually from September. Now this has been sitting around on my hard drive for a while and I thought uh, we're due for a Warships replay and I decided to take a look at this and it's been interesting because this is only a couple of months ago. This is the 5.0 version of the game and I've definitely improved since I played this one and uh, although I wasn't playing too badly and although the result is kind of good uh, I still think these days I probably would have played better and there's one or two particular things that I did that I really wouldn't do now this is the tier 4 American cruiser the Phoenix although it's pretty lightly armored it's at least fast it's fairly nippy it's got a very good spread of guns and in some ways you can consider it to be the younger brother to the Omaha because they have a reasonably similar playstyle now you can't take a lot of hits and this is technically uh, a tier 5? Was it tier 6 game? No, it was a tier 5 game, I think, this one. So I do have to be wary of things hitting me. And actually, yeah, no, I've, I've gotten a little bit close to the enemy, actually, maybe. The rest of my team has split south, leaving me up here as uh, potentially the only thing that those enemy ships can shoot at or want to shoot at. I mean, they're clearly focusing their attention on me. There are actually allied ships closer than that, but uh, no, I think I've managed to grab their attention here. Now, the spread of guns does come in very useful because I can just keep my guns firing, although uh, to the rear I think you can only ever really get two guns on, so you have to angle a bit outwards to get more of your side-mounted guns on target as well. Now, that for attacker is pretty nasty if it hits me because that is the first of any of the cruisers at uh, tier 5 to have 8 inch guns and those are nasty if they hit you in a very thinly armoured machine like this although if it's AP I think they're more likely to just uh, overpen you but if you fire HE at me yeah that could be not good so I've gotten this guy's focus. I'm actually, I, I, I kind of mix it up between HE and AP in this game. And I think I was probably at this stage still experimenting with uh, what shells to fire at what targets. But for now I'm going for HE against this for attacker. And I'm not the only one firing at him right now. But everyone else has gone really far south. Everyone else has gone along to the J line. And they are at least engaging the New York and the Phoenix. But uh, the Wyoming and the for attacker are very much closer to me and I'm actually now the only ship between the enemies and our carrier and I think our carrier was actually starting to get a little bit worried. Now I really can't take this for attacker on my own. Now, I'm able to maneuver to dodge most of his shots but I'm gonna run out of health eventually and these guns well they're all right and yeah I know I don't know why I was dropping torps here that's well out of range. These guns are all right but Taking down this nearly full health for attacker is probably going to be a tall order before he can take me down in a one versus one fight. So I need somebody else to shoot at him really. And <laughs> that was a bit unlucky that straddle, but hey, this is one of warships and that happens sometimes. So he is, uh, he is actually now getting uh, shot at by other stuff, and that's a good thing because I'm nearly back to our carrier. Although our carrier will have been uh, unspotted because. Carriers generally don't have a lot of guns on them. They do have some secondaries, at least some of the carriers have some secondaries, but uh, of course the secondaries would not be firing at anything at that range, so uh, the, the default kind of stealth range of the carrier means that he, he'll have been safe up until the fur attacker was a lot closer, but the fur attacker has broken off because the allies going along the J line have actually started to push up a bit and they're now going for the A point. Now in the north, meanwhile, we don't actually have a lot of ships. I mean, I don't think we started off with a lot of ships spawning there, and the Tenryu has actually run away. So we might lose B, but as this was 5.0, that's not necessarily fatal. Uh, one of the changes that came in with, I want to say 5.1, or was it like 5.02 or 5.03? I can't even remember. It might have been one of the later 5.0 patches rather than one of the 5.1 patches. But basically, uh, on this particular game mode, an enemy controlling both cap circles is an instant loss. 
But as you're going to see later on, well, it isn't actually, a, a, it wasn't at this stage of the uh, the game's development. And that turns out to be rather useful, because otherwise this would have been a much shorter match. So I've come back into gun range, I'm just pelting some HE down at these guys, trying to set some fires. I haven't done a whole lot so far, I mean, it's just under, what is that, I can barely read the uh, damage counter. About 9,000, 10,000? There we go, that's just pushed me over 10,000. So, it's not... Totally terrible, considering I'm fighting mostly higher tiers, but uh, it's going to have to be more damage than that to really make an impact. And the foot attacker is getting quite close to this Kavachi, and I think he's uh, maybe trying to get to it in torpedo range, so I have to be a bit wary about that myself. But, well, if he was torping anybody, it would have been the Kavachi, so I'm probably okay right now. Now he's actually taken refuge behind the island and he's going to reverse out again. I'm not quite sure why. I'd have just tried to make a getaway at that point, but uh, no, he's, he's protecting himself from the Kavachi's guns, but there's another Kavachi to the south that can shoot at him. He's actually backing out now so I can shoot at him, and this is a lovely broadside shot. His guns aren't even looking at me, so I can just sit here, put out Salvo a of HE, switch to AP, and that was not bad, four hits for a thousand. For these guns, you know, they're basically, I think, 127 mils, like destroyer guns, so they're not particularly powerful. But another salvo in his side with AP, maybe I can get this kill. He's not got a lot of health left at this stage. And I could have been aiming a bit better there. I could have been aiming for underneath turrets. I could have been going for citadel shots at that kind of range when, the, when he didn't have his guns on me. But, uh, as I was saying... <laughs> I would definitely have improved since then. And quite honestly, I think these days, as a solo player, I am probably a better player of warships than I am at World of Tanks. I'm not saying I'm like a pro warships player or anything like that, but uh, I, I'm really not consistent when I play World of Tanks. Some days I'm just really on form and everything goes right, but most of the time, no. <laughs> It's really not like that at all. So, uh, warships, on the other hand, uh, I can be a lot more consistent in, and I think that uh, that's the key to being uh, uh, a good player overall, is just consistency. So I'm trying for this Wyoming, and no, somebody else gets the kill. Those were some terribly aimed shots, though. I also noticed when I was watching this back, uh, reviewing it earlier, that I was, with the HE shells, I was shooting at the waterline a lot of the time. You don't do that with HE shells. You shoot for the superstructure, and that's how you set fires. But uh, I, I wasn't, and so I probably could have had a bit more fire damage in this uh, if I'd been shooting a bit better as well. I mean, this Clemson, I'm just derping out all over the place. Although I did just do a, a critical there. Which I think was possibly an engine. So yeah, my, my shooting has improved and it's still not perfect, but uh, that was a particular derp I noticed. that Those kind of, especially against battleships, shooting HE at the, the thickest belt armour is, is not going to do a whole lot. So the Clemson's trying to get in close with this Kavachi and oh, I've just taken a hit from somewhere, possibly the New York. Not sure, maybe the Miyogi from the north. Miyogi's actually got a pretty good range, so uh, whatever it was, it was an overpenning shot, but it disabled one of my guns temporarily. But hey, I've got a lot of them. So I'm spreading my fire a bit there. I don't know why I put a salvo at the, uh, the New York when I could have been continuing to shoot this Clemson. And again, well, that was just bad RNG, that, that straddle, but this kind of close range, with the rate of fire of this, I should have been able to kill this Clemson easily. And instead, I'm just derping out all over the place. I'm not giving it enough lead. I'm not... Well, I'm not getting particularly good RNG with some of these shots either, but I certainly could have been aiming better. And this Kavachi, yeah, that, that was uh, a lot more health he lost than he probably needed to. Now, at, at, at this point, I realised... Uh, well, I probably did realise that, uh, hey, look, there's stuff shooting me from the north, because, you know, that... Sometimes we say these things are like, oh, at this point I realised this, and this point I realised that. Well, you're kind of going from cues in the replay, and the fact that I was glancing north meant, yeah, okay, I was starting to get a bit worried about being shot from the north, so... Uh, it, it's... I, I've got to be wary here. I don't want to just get broadsided by the Miyogi and the, the Chikuma that are up there. However, this New York is now alone. Uh, we lost a lot of ships, and in fact, they have fully capped B as well, but we are in the process of capping A ourselves, so... We are going to get some points, uh, but in terms of the teams, it's actually kind of even right now. We've got a Miyogi that's all the way over on the one line, the Kwachi and the Tenryu and myself are all fairly close together, and then the Hosho, well, he's probably fairly safe right now. 
So I've capped, but I don't think I got that much XP for capping. I mean, with the most recent iteration, uh, the, where are we at? 5.1.4? Capping gives a lot these days, to the point where sometimes if you're playing particularly for XP, uh, I've seen people do stupid things just so they can cap. And if you can fully cap a cap circle yourself, yeah, no, that's worth quite a lot of XP. It, it's worth probably more XP than it should be, and I don't know why Wargame kind of overbuffed it. Anyway, going for, again, the whole shots with the HE, and I am setting some fires, but I'm not doing as much damage as I, as I could, definitely. And I, I don't know why that particular replay bug is there, by the way. That's my own kind of uh, uh, mast and rigging that's uh, appearing for some reason. But, uh, yeah, I'm just watching this and wincing slightly. I am getting some damage out of it because, you know, the RNG is sending some of my shots into the superstructure. But this is not where I'm aiming. I'm actually aiming at the waterline. And with AP shells in a cruiser or a destroyer or whatever, then that's fine. That's what you do. Heck, even uh, these guns uh, against... Uh, destroyer guns against a cruiser or whatever, you know, that's where you would aim, but not with HG. Anyway, I actually got the kill with the fire and... There's the carrier, yes. Now, he is sending his torp bombs after me, which is, I think, a bit of a panic move because I have probably a fairly decent chance of dodging these unless he does a really sneaky manual drop. But, yeah, no, I think that is a manual drop, but uh, it's not really a big threat. I just killed my speed, turned a bit, and that was fine. Now, this is the other point where I really, really did a weird thing. Now, for somehow, I got uh, a team kill there. I don't know how that happened. I really don't. I think it was... Did I put out torpedoes? It was a bit weird, and it must have just... The, the, the allied... Uh, uh, the Miyogi... Was it Miyogi? Must have just sailed into uh, at the edge of my torpedoes range, because I, I think I'd put torps out against the New York. So, yeah, that was a bit of a gaff. The other big gaff I'm making here is not firing HE at this guy, and I am actually now switching to HE, but I was firing a bunch of AP, and I should have been spamming him with HE to set him on fire to prevent him from taking off planes, and it's only now I've switched to the HE, but his torp bombers are going to get to take off again, and that's going to be quite bad for me. Now, this was a little bit unlucky, I mean, this is second salvo of HE, now I've set him on fire, but he extinguishes, get his, his, uh, gets his uh, 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 torp bombers back up, and I do kill him with a torpedo, but he's already sent his torp bombers to try and kill me, so... He, just in the time he was able to get his torp bombers up, was able to uh, uh, direct them to me, and that's going to be a hit, and that's rather nasty. Yes, that was health I probably could have afforded to, to keep. Now, normally I'm very, uh, I, I mean just to return briefly to the issue of the team kill, normally I'm very, very careful with torpedoes, but that's one of those totally unforeseen circumstances where you just have absolutely no inkling that somebody is going to even go close to your torpedoes. And so it came as a complete surprise to me when I actually got a team kill in this match. I remember that much. It doesn't happen often, team killing people with torpedoes. So, yeah. So the Miyogi's shooting at me and I managed to dodge all of those shots or else he was just aiming badly but I was kind of convinced I was dead because I'd run aground there avoiding those torpedoes and that made me a nice juicy sitting target for the Miyogi but uh, as we're ahead on points I am now disinclined to stick around because if I die that's worth a bunch of points to the enemy team so I could have tried to sail around at range, dodged this Miyogi's shells and... Uh, uh, done it that way, but I think at this point I decided that discretion was the better part of Valor because I then turned south. Although I am pummeling this guy while he's in range and I do manage to set a fire, so that's a bit more damage. Now the enemy Tenryu has gone south, probably gunning for our Hosho, but there's a Kobachi down there as well, so maybe I can get there in time to, uh, to do something against that guy, maybe not, but We'll see. I mean, I've got the speed to, if it comes to that. Uh, uh, the gun range on this isn't bad either. But uh, the Kwachi, well, the Kwachi actually ends up taking care of it. I, I wasn't sure, because the Kwachi's guns are terrible. And trying to hit uh, Tenryu, uh, anything, uh, any kind of cruiser, same tier, higher tier, whatever, uh, anything uh, other than point blank range, even at point blank range, you're probably going to miss quite a lot of your shots. And actually, with the uh, the tier 3 battleships on both sides, I thoroughly recommend just free XPing past them. Tier 4s, uh, the, both the tier 4s are reasonably decent, but the tier 3s are just 
awful. So, yeah, a little bit of advice for you there. Anyway, we've skipped to the end because, well, the uh, Tenryu got killed and it is just down to this enemy Miyogi now. We have quite thoroughly won. We're running out of time, but we are, at this stage, we're going to win on points. So, again, I pull back just into range enough to get some shots, but uh, I kind of play it safe a bit here. So, I was, I think, hoping to set a fire or two more, but... Uh, if I can even just keep this guy spotted for our uh, destroyer, although that doesn't directly get me any experience, you know, it gets, uh, not destroyer, carrier. It gets that guy a bit more XP, I suppose. And there's a chance we might get to kill this Miyogi before the timer runs out in 60 seconds time. So there's the top bombers going in with one wave. The Miyogi's uh, making a turn. Now the Miyogi's actually reasonably maneuverable and our carrier driver was trying to do a drop from both sides, but the Miyogi managed to avoid, well, most of them, oh, well, maybe half of them. He actually took, what was that, four torpedoes there? So that carrier driver on our team, well, I don't know, he's probably in, rolling around in a, uh, a, whatever the tier 10 Japanese one is at this point, the Hikiryu, and doing triple manual torp drops that people can't avoid and making all the Yamato and, and Montano the battleship drivers cry. But anyway, now on to the results, and we can actually see that this was pretty decent. Um, apart from the team kill, which was just unfortunate, I actually ended up top of that team, nearly 1600 base XP. And I did the sums, because uh, the end result screens don't give you a grand total for damage, and the damage counter itself only gives you uh, damage done with guns, it doesn't give you fire damage and flooding damage. So in this case, it was 71k damage in a tier 5 battle with my Phoenix. So. That was rather a nice result, I felt. And I've actually kept the Phoenix. Uh, I, I've got enough slots in my garage, that, uh, in my port, that I've decided to do what I did with World of Tanks, keep a ship for every tier that I find fun to play. So if I want to platoon with someone who's only got lower tiers, then this is an option. And I almost kept the Kuma as well, but I ended up wanting that captain for the, uh, the later cruisers. So, yeah, both the... Uh, the the Japanese and American cruisers at tier 4 are pretty good. The Karlsruhe, not so much. I think that thing's got a bit of a reputation, but I haven't played it yet myself. So there we go, a bit of older uh, warships action. Um, I have got some other ones lined up. Uh, I've got a reasonably okay Tirpitz game and uh, an Otago game, which I actually sent to Jingles, but if Jingles doesn't use it, then I sure as hell will. So uh, if you've enjoyed this one, however, in the meantime, you can hit the like button, you can leave any comments below, you can subscribe to my channel, and as always, Stay tuned for more.